Thanks for coming. How are you enjoying so, the weather? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we really don't get to get outside much. It's really uh, it's, it's one of the one of the uh, one of the things about about doing these is we, we see the inside of the venue and the inside of the hotel yep. pretty much. Plus we get out for a dinner. Barbecue. Yeah. I just walk by the table, it's a bad barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> So, how do we begin our routine? Take it, take it, we don't, <laughs> <laughs> take it away, take it away. They have to ask us a leading question before we get started. I don't think I think it's because you You guys got some questions, you want to know anything, you want to just tell you a bunch of lies, or, or you know, <laughs> shut up, or what? I like lies. <laughs> anyway, you, you look awfully chummy, I thought you were supposed to be enemies. We love each other. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It's it's that's that's what makes it that's what makes it fun when we're doing a scene and we have we have a good relationship and and, uh, and then we get to be so shitty towards each other. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was one of your favorite parts, wasn't it? Being <laughs> in your office. Being mean and good. I tell you, I know. I what's what's the thing you really like the best? You, you told me that. The thing you say to me that was the This is where you fuck her up and kiss my ass. I was, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> You say, what is this? And I go, what is this? This is where you fuck her up and kiss my ass. I want to act it out now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the, uh, um, what was his name? Hosting was the character's name? Lloyd, uh, Lloyd Redfeather? Or, uh, again, it comes in. It's where start speaking to Adam. You got that egg? You remember the scene? No, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough to run that. Story. So if I said, fuck up, kiss my ass now, you probably would remember it tomorrow. Like, no, I wouldn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> what else can we take? <laughs> Questions? Thoughts? Ideas? Um, yes. What uh, was your guys' reactions whenever they contacted you and said, hey, we would like to start doing X Files again? What? The last time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. It was great. I was. I'm, I'm always happy to go back and play the character. It's a great job. It's a great gig. And uh, um, and uh, you know we were with we were with we were on that show for so long. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, we were on that show for what we did nine, nine years. Yeah. In a, initially, ten years, and now we're going to we're going to eleven eleven season. So. Um, it's a big part of our life, you know, and it, it, um, to be told that you're going to be able to do that again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. It's lovely. It's very awesome. Yes. Yes. Uh, very awesome. Four and a half hours in the makeup chair. <laughs> yeah. It's not so awesome for <laughs> So my first question was, Chris. Any chance I'm going to get a little healthier so I won't need to have so much makeup? <laughs> no, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, really looking forward to it. But I'm hoping I might get a little better physically or they get a little better with the makeup. <laughs> it's, it's painful. It's just like prosthetics are really not fun. I mean, it was the same thing when... when uh, Skinner was going through the period where he had the nanobots in his, in his system and he had all the, you know, this, this stuff going on in his face and neck. And, and I finally said to him, after, you know, after a number of episodes of Crycheck having the full control and, and you know, um, making the nanobots do whatever they were doing, I, I finally said, because the, the makeup was just, it's, it's not fun. And I said to Chris and Frank Spodnitz, I said, can we like get rid of this? So they, they let me go cry check, and then the point there wasn't a problem anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but it is, yeah, no, I, 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 um, I sympathize with you because it's really not. Poor old Nick Lee gets killed in every show I do. He got killed in continuum as well. Yeah. 
Hey, yes, go ahead. Exactly. Someone, what's one? Here, yes. Okay. If they were doing a cross over of the X Files with some other TV show, what TV show would you like it to cross over with? And how do you see the plot play out in your I want to be in House of Cards. Yes. <laughs> 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 you that show. Yes, you <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great, that's a great thought. I, I love that show. I just started, yeah, I started yeah. just watching yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I, I know. I know. As far as plots, I'm not a writer, so I, I can't. Don't 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 put that pressure on me. <laughs> uh, I can barely act. Um, so I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, I think Supernatural would be a would be a, would be a, would be a natural um, crossover. Um, Are you going to play two characters? I, I, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Are we going to pay me double? <laughs> <laughs> but so, they, so that's, that's a good point. I don't know if they would be able to do that with these characters, but I think, I think it would be, be fun. It would be fun to pull them guys you know, the boys. Yes? Do you guys believe in the supernatural and UFOs and... No. <laughs> <laughs> You don't well, believe this? Look, look at that's a long story, actually. Um, it's a good story. Because no, I don't. Uh, uh, and I'm predisposed not to, because I've been a sort of skeptic all my life and a secularist and whatever. But um, when I started working on the show, people assumed that because I was working on the show, that of course I believed in all these things, uh, not understanding that. Uh, I mean, maybe the A-list actors get to choose what they do, but most of us who work in the trenches, we get a part, we get a, we do it. Oh, it's a horror movie? Great. It's sci-fi? Great. <laughs> Romance? Great. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing this show about a alien abduction? <laughs> okay, anyway, good. Okay, yeah, okay, good. Uh, anyway, so people kept, kept wanted to take me on the skywalks to see UFOs or bring the latest information on Area 51. <laughs> finally said, you know, but I don't actually believe in this stuff. And they said, but, but why not? <coughs> and I said, well, the onus is on you to prove to me that they exist, not me to prove that they don't. You can't prove a negative, right? But they said, but we have. At that point, I was stopped. I, quite honestly, I was stopped because I had no idea what proofs they proofs they thought they had presented. So I had to find out. So I actually went on a on a journey. Uh, I, I en encountered a, a man by named Barry Byerstein in Vancouver, who was a member of PSYCOP, a committee for the scientific investigation of claims of the paranormal now changed the name to Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. But what they do is they look at paranormal claims and apply scientific methods to see whether there's evidence to support them. And uh, so far they have not convinced me, and James Randi has a, a million dollar reward if anyone can convince him, and they have not so far. So, so my answer is, no to that question. Well, maybe but their you, maybe their science is not the same as our science. Isn't that the way people are starting to think? And <coughs> who who believes in experts anymore nowadays? Anyway, yeah, I mean, really. But I mean, no alien science. Maybe maybe. That's, that's yes, yes, no. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's human science that can't grasp it. The alien science has got it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're saying that our science can't. Our science can't prove right. that there's alien existence, but maybe. I don't know where I'm going with that. Erase, erase, erase. Yeah. erase. <laughs> what else can we do? Um, but yes, I, I, I do. I believe in, I believe in supernatural uh, occurrences, and I believe that there is uh, extraterrestrial existence, because I think it would be very unless thing the board's good as it gets. Yeah, exactly. We are, Non-violence. Yes. Oh, That's drag. There would be no extraterrestrial existence. I said there's no extraterrestrial existence here. Oh, okay. Now. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I never got. That. <coughs> yeah. Okay. No. Okay. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can do another season. Thank God. <laughs> 
there yes. are. No. Oops, where are we? Anyway, here. Um, do you guys have a favorite episode, or is there like a favorite topic from one of those episodes that's do near and dear to you, or? Okay. I was always a big fan of Home. Home was, was that's, that's my mentality. You know, it's, I'm a sick puppy. Um, <laughs> um, but I was also, uh, I, I thought that the Clyde Bruckman's final repose of Peter Boyle was, was, was amazing. I thought he was brilliant. And, it, and I don't know if you've seen any of the outtakes from it, but it, there is just, I mean, he and Jillian and the day together, it's, just, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so those are my. Uh, Okay. Yeah, I can't say the same about home for me, but uh, it's curious because when, when home first showed, I mean, many of us who were X File connected them, and I know a lot of X File fans, were, were quite frankly horrified. They thought it was just too awful. Um, but now, here you are at this event, uh, where that's probably home is probably child's play to you. <laughs> it's only a few. Uh, few Dying people under under the attic. I mean, under the cellar. I mean, what's that? I mean, you know, discovering some old bones. I mean, that's really drag your mom out from under the bed to have sex with her. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking her in the trunk of your Cadillac and driving down the street listening to Johnny Mathis. Fantastic. Yeah, well, no, my favorite episode Fantastic. was to do was the Tilly Kumi, where I got to be philosophical and have. A, have a debate based on Dostoevsky. That's more my style. <laughs> okay. Music to the cigarettes while you're now is really good. Yep. Yeah. 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 I thought it was really good. Well. Hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite embarrassed. I'm just saying hi. Yes. Can you tell us about your upcoming projects? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about the X-Files some more. <laughs> uh, Polaroid? Yeah. I have a movie uh, called Polaroid coming out, uh, um, Weinstein Company. Uh, it's a horror movie and it uh, was directed by uh, Lars Kledberg, who is a uh, Norwegian director who did a short um, on this. Yeah, on the subject, and, and, uh, and it was really, really good, and it, did, and it was well received. So the uh, Weinstein's decided to uh, to make it into full length feature, and um, bless you. Thank you. And it, um, I, I mean, uh, I did, I went in and some, did some ADR on it the other day, and it looks, it looks really, uh, <laughs> looks really good. So I mean, I, it's so hard to tell, you know. You just don't know. You you work, you work on a project. You hope it's going to be a, be good. You hope it's going to people are going to react to it and respond to it, and. and um, Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You just, you just hope for the best. My, so my hopes are up. My, my most immediate upcoming project is tomorrow night at six in this in this room right here. I don't know if it's in this room, but uh, they're, they're showing a movie called Residue, uh, which I'm in, uh, which I didn't understand when I read the script. <laughs> didn't understand it when I shot it. <laughs> but they assure me I will understand it when I see it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, apart from that, I'm doing a lot of theater directing actually now. I'm casting a play to be rehearsed in September, and then I've got another couple of theater projects coming up. You would have to come to Vancouver in Canada to see that. Yes. What is a dream play for you to direct, or have you already directed that dream play? I'm working on it, actually. Uh, there, are, there are a number of dream plays, but the dream play I'm working on right now to do is The Cherry Orchard. Check out. I could see you doing Marat's side. Oh my. <laughs> oh my, that would be fun to do. You would be, very, you would, you would be awesome. Get the budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I forgot. Um, sorry if this was already covered before I came in along the lines of projects. So I read in a forum that you guys are going to be in San Diego next week talking about audio. Is that 
Okay. <laughs> David's gonna be there next week. Oh, that's okay. David and, and some of the people from gotcha. uh, yeah, from audio. Okay, you guys were on the list in the forum. Well, we did it. I mean, we worked on it. Oh, okay, but you won't be kidding. Talk about it. At all? We're not. We're not at the level of, of other people. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 so we're here. <laughs> Say that to me. They said, "Well, you happen to be down there, and you want to stop by." Exactly. That's what I got. Um, but it's just a matter of driving down from LA to San Diego. But still, it's like, you know. Anyway. So no, we won't be. We will not be there. <laughs> you know, it was a, it was it was a lot of fun doing the audio book, and it was it was it was fun um, seeing where I. It was kind of hard figuring out because we had, we had already shot season ten, and what we we're I probably shouldn't say it, that's never mind. <laughs> oh, Did you <laughs> Come on, we won't tell. We won't tell. Well, just as a, on the process, did you record with any other of the actors? No. Yeah, <coughs> not did I. Yeah. You see, I'm, I have a, a long background in radio and drama. I started as a radio actor in the 50s. Wow. Way earlier than that. But so the 50s. Uh, and we, that's how we did, you know, there's a, there's a microphone here and another actor there and they stand with the script and you, and you play the scene. You still have the script, but you play the scene with the other actor. The most critical skill in radio acting at that time was how to turn the page without it being heard on the microphone mm -hmm. because it was live. We're going through, the sound effects are being done live, everything is being done live. I was even in... Uh, one of the bigger productions, I was about well, 12, I think, but uh, they had an orchestra, and the orchestra was in a, in a, in a studio uh, with a window to the studio that the actors are in. The sound is right there. They're doing the sound, and the producer is God. He's up here conducting it like, like an orchestra. And that's my idea of radio drama. The next time I encountered radio drama was in the 70s and I was hired as a radio drama director. And the first thing I had to do was George Bernard Shaw's Man and Superman in stereo. That's five hours long if you know the play, um, just to get me warmed up. Um, and that was interesting too. That was quite like shooting a movie because we shot, we recorded all the sound. Then we cut all the sound, all the actors, I mean, we cut all the voices together and edited it. Uh, like you would in a movie, and then we put in the sound, and then we added in the music after that, and then mixed it all together. But when we get this thing, okay, so some actors are in New York, some actors are in Los Angeles, I'm in Vancouver, uh, here's your script. It's a whole series of lines that I have to say. Okay, now say line one. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> now say line two. Blah, 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 blah. Not talking to So they weren't reading? Nobody was reading with you? Actually, I, I exaggerated. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a non Ladies and gentlemen, the singer is coming. It was a non-actor feeding me the lines, and I could sort of understand what he was saying, but it wasn't in really the feel of the, of the you, show. You can't get so, it. So yeah. you're just, you're, you're playing to an imagined story. And, but it'll be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually heard, I actually heard some of it, some of it, uh, and, it and it really cuts together as well. I, I'm surprised because there's a lot of, I mean, there's like running, there, there's there's exertion, there's there's uh, a lot of physical stuff going on, you know. So and and you know, David and Jill were in there. She was she was puffing away. <laughs> you could hear her like you know going through all the um, the motions of what she was whatever she was doing you know, in the course of the scene. Um, just, so I'm just not sure what name jumped is that there's an audio version of X Files, that's what they're talking mm -hmm. we're talking about. It's, it's an, an audio version, version yeah. yeah. It's not it's not an audio book. It's, um, I did a couple of audio did you do any audio books? As in narrations? For the X Files? Oh not for X Files, no. I did two audio books. And so I had I had as, as you're reading it, they want you to try to um, 
Awesome. You had to play me. I had to play you. Oh I had to play you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was a second X Files revival series currently in production. Is that not true? Oh, a second X Files revival season in production. Is that not true? Oh, it's, oh, it's almost. It's not next, yet in production. Next month. Okay. It starts in August. Yeah. Uh, are you both going to be in it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could speak to that. We won't it's tell anyone. It's, <laughs> nice, it's a nice summer. I'm enjoying my water skiing. Uh, they asked me if I would be available on starting August. Wouldn't you think they'd make me an offer? No, the Canadian casting office is closed until the end of the month. <laughs> and since I live in Canada, I only get an offer from the Canadian casting office. I hope I like it. Though. <laughs> 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 it was going to be really close to when they start shooting. <laughs> I wonder how Chris will do with all that prosthetic makeup of <laughs> 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 smoking that. Yeah, anyway, anyway. yeah it's, it's, it's difficult. It should be exciting. Yes? Um, looking back um, over technology and, and changes and advances in uh, making not only film but, but television series, um, can you speak to how different the experience may be now where anyone with an iPhone can make a movie or go to buy a GoPro and make a movie? Can you speak to working with directors or production crew on, on what's changed from 20 plus years ago to now? Well, I got a computer on my desk, or on my credenza <laughs> actually, it's on my credenza I think. Um, so it's interesting, yeah, it, it, was, it was weird, it was really weird walking into my office and seeing a computer on my desk. After not having one on my desk for nine years. You know, and plus you, you go back and look at the phones that we were using at the beginning of the show. You know, having like, the phones we have now, and it's just, there's so many, there's so, so much more, there's so much more technology available to make, to make communication. That's, that's why I was, it was always my question, like during the second movie, it's like, you got Mulder and Scully running around with all these these FBI agents that nobody knows who they are, and and then finally they get in the bind and they go to Skinner. And I'm like going, why didn't they go to Skinner in the first place? You know, so it, it just it was, it, 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 and they have that available with the you know with all the technology and all that stuff. But but, uh, but in, in terms of the other aspect of your question, in terms of actually making the movie or making the project. To me, I don't notice any difference. I mean, it feels the same. Um, the camera's smaller. They look different. The camera's are different. And we don't have to stop every four minutes to to to, to reload the camera because we started <laughs> doing it on thirty-five. And that was that was that was a deal. I mean, you'd be in the middle of a scene and they run out, they'd run out of film. You know, the film would run out, and then they got to change the change the thing. And it's like, you know, or you or you got you you're you're just in a in a on a roll. What you're doing in the scene, and, and they've got to change. They've got to change the film. Take the time to change the film. And when they change the film, then they just start. They just they decide to start fiddling with lights. And, and it's like sometimes, sometimes you'll do a take, and every, the lights are all set and everything. You do a take, and then you do another take, and it's like there's like 20 minutes in between takes because they've got to start you know screw around with lights or do. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> What are we waiting for? <laughs> Can't we just do it? Uh, well, I don't know what you mean. I mean, normally, there's the master, there's the other people's coverage, then there's lunch, and then there's my coverage. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not to do with technology. Uh, <laughs> but it's not as different as you might think when you you know when you think about all of, you know iPhones and all of that. I mean, yes, I see a I see a DP. Um, judging his shots with his iPhone, he's got because he's got an app called um, I forget what it's called, that, uh, that'll show his, all his camera positions. He doesn't need the, the 
trigger the, the, or the trigger fences and stuff to, to find the shot. So there's things like that. But the actual process, you know, actually what we do on the set hasn't changed very much yet. Was there ever like a route or a path that you wished your characters would go that you stressed to the producers or whoever that they just completely ignored or went down with you? Well, when the, when the well, Love Gunman got their own series, I was like, what about Skinner? <laughs> I, said, I said that to Chris one day. I said, what about me? <laughs> what about Skinner? And he goes, what would it be about? And I was like, Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this was around the time when Golden Girls was still going, I think. So. And I wanted a spin off from our syndicate, you know, like uh -huh. the old men. <laughs> the Golden Syndicate. <laughs> but the thing that we did try to do, some of us tried to do, was we tried to get the smoking man on water skis. <laughs> <laughs> because I am a competitive water skier. Oh, wow. And uh, Chris is a surfer, so he's very into water sports. So he really liked the idea. Uh, and we were trying to find a way to do that. I even, when I wrote the one script that I wrote, I, had, I first had a, a scene where I <clears throat> taught uh, Scully had a water ski. <laughs> I bet you did. So the closest we got to that at all was a, a, just a line reference in the, in the episode we talked about before, where I say <coughs> Mulder's mother, or Mulder's. Yes, we're talking. I'm talking to. No, I'm right. talking to Mulder's. Mother, right? Margaret. Is that Margaret? No. No. Uh, it's kind of new. Uh, Bob's wife. Bob Goodwin's wife. Was, no, that was Scully's wife. No, that's Scully's wife. Oh, you're talking about Scully's wife. You're talking about Scully's wife. The yeah. one that went up in the air <laughs> in, the, in the wheelchair. Yeah. No, that's, that's my wife. No. <laughs> She's still up. We're talking about the ex-wife. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, who's, who's, who's Yeah, who's, yeah, because it's a whole issue, but that was I Mulder's father. So, so yeah, so the scene was with Mulder's mother. And we were talking about the old days uh, with me and Bill Mulder, his father, and where I say, you know, he was a good water skier. And I say, but not as good as I was. And I also add, which could be said about a number of things. <laughs> but that's as close as we got to that. But um, yeah, when I, when I, yeah, but we never actually, I asked Chris once, well, why didn't we get the scene with the water skiing? He said the other writers would talk about it. <coughs> how did you get your roles and how did you prepare for them? Um, <laughs> go ahead. Let me tell you stories on this. But yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell his story and you can tell why. <laughs> <laughs> so he was in a really grumpy mood. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the, the show uh, shot the original pilot in Vancouver. I was running a theater school, an acting school in Vancouver. And doing some acting, but not a whole lot. And uh, I got this audition for the senior FBI agent in this show called The X-Files. The senior FBI agent had three lines. So how did I prepare in my usual way? I worked on the line, I worked on the backstory, and why am I 